Invasive species already cost billions. As the climate warms, the damage is expected to get worse. That's the headline from USA Today from July 30th, 2022. Welcome to another science update here at Nature Bats Last. Nature Bats Last can be found, as always, at GuyMcPherson.com. Here's the lead. Frogs, lizards, and other amphibians and reptiles living in places they don't belong cost the world at least $17 billion between 1986 and 2020, a group of international researchers concluded in a new study. But the true cost of these invasive species is much greater, said authors of the paper published in the journal Scientific Reports. Scientific Reports is part of the renowned Nature series. It's an open access journal. A link to both this paper in USA Today and also the paper in Scientific Reports will be posted at GuyMcPherson.com com coincident with release of this video. The true cost of these invasive species is much greater, said authors of the paper published in the journal Scientific Reports. The first of its kind assessment tallied the economic cost of only 27 species reported in a worldwide database. Ten times that many reptiles and amphibians are classified as invasive. So they're just taking a relatively small sample here and still coming up with a huge economic cost. Again from the USA Today paper, quote, these invasions are widely expected to grow even worse with climate change as warmer temperatures provide more comfortable homes for species on the move. This is what's called a positive interaction, even though it's not particularly positive, much like a positive feedback loop is not necessarily positive for humans and other organisms on the planet. In the United States, more than 6,500 non-native species have been identified, costing an estimated $100 billion in economic damage every year, according to U.S. Geological Survey study done from 2005, the most recent estimate available. So we are not doing a good job keeping up with this information, and I suspect the only reason these kinds of studies are supported and this kind of research and conversation is being had is because of the monetary cost involved. Here's an example. In Canada, cases of tick-borne Lyme disease have quadrupled, and that's all in a very short period of time. In June, biologists in Florida captured the state's largest ever python, a 215-pound behemoth that measured nearly 18 feet long. Inside her abdomen, the Conservancy of Southwest Florida reported was a record 122 eggs and the remains of an adult white-tailed deer. Well, that's inconvenient, especially for the deer. The pythons reflect the destruction invasive species can wreak in native ecosystems. Studies have shown pythons wiped out rabbit and fox populations in the southern reaches of Everglades National Park. That's from the USA Today story, and even more interesting is Carl Hyacin's 2021 book, Squeeze Me. This is the seventh work of fiction, heavily rooted in fact, featuring my favorite character, former Governor Skink. If you're not reading Carl Hyacin, then that's one more missed opportunity for a little humor in your life that also reflects reality in a stunningly, sadly tragic way. The state of Florida has removed 16,000 Burmese pythons since 2020. The authors of this paper indicate authorities could regularly update a blacklist of species that could not be traded. I would recommend that a whitelist is a much better idea. We should whitelist the species that can be traded, that can be brought into a country rather than black blacklisting those that can't. Blacklisting assumes that everything is okay except for the species that get blacklisted. Instead, it makes a lot more sense to whitelist species, the few that have been shown to not do damage when they're introduced into a country. I was a member of the Arizona Governor's Invasive Species Advisory Council from 2005 to 2007, and I was teaching about the impacts of non-indigenous species for many years when I was on campus at the University of Arizona. Let's turn to the paper now in Scientific Reports, published by Soto and several other authors, entitled Global Economic Costs of Herpetofauna Invasions. Why global economic costs? Because nothing matters more than money in the divided states of America. 
This paper in Scientific Reports points to the largest assessment of total economic damage bun, done by non-native non or non-indigenous species. And that's from 2005, February 15th, 2005, when Pimentel and two other colleagues pub published a paper indicating that $120 billion a year was being lost as a result of non-indigenous species. So that paper by Pen Pimentel and colleagues is cited in the scientific reports paper. Clearly, we need to do a better job of keeping track of non-native species and particularly noting the ones that are doing real damage to ecosystems and therefore to us because we rely heavily upon those ecosystems. Please like, subscribe, and share this video. Click the bell when you subscribe so you'll be notified about future videos. Become a member of this channel for as little as 99 cents per month. Mostly though, thanks for watching. Thank you.